This is Sal again. I'm here at Stanford Medical School with Dr. Abraham Verghese. And, and what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the ritual of the physical exam, the bedside exam. The physical exam. The ritual. Why do you call it a ritual? That's interesting that you, you call it a ritual. Yeah, I think the, the lesson I've learned from hanging around with my anthropology colleagues here at Stanford is that rituals are all about transformation. Uh, a ritual signals the crossing of a threshold. Mm -hmm. You know, we baptize to signal the crossing of a threshold. We marry to signal our departure from a life of solitude, loneliness, and misery to one of eternal bliss. Yes. So our lives are full of... You shouldn't be <laughs> laughing, Sam. No, <laughs> this is... It, it, it resonates so strongly with you. So crossing a threshold is why we have a ritual. And I would say that the act of one individual coming to another and telling them things they wouldn't tell their rabbi or their preacher, yep. and then incredibly disrobing and allowing touch, yeah. I would say that that signals uh, a ritual of incredible importance. Yeah. And the fact that we, in the postmodern sort of medical world, have stopped seeing it that way, yeah. and just see it as sort of, yes, another data gathering tool, may work for us, but I don't think it works for the patient. And I think that a major disconnect between us and our patients is our failure to see what they see, which is a profound ritual in which they're highly invested. And when we then come and just stick our stethoscope on top of the yeah. shirt or don't uh, examine them thoroughly, we are sort of shortchanging ourselves of an important ritual. Yeah, I now feel shortchanged. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, 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 sorry. But I'd love to list for you, if I may, yeah. those aspects of what make this a ritual. Yeah. So if you, if you uh, look at it, uh, first of all, there's uh, always a specialized space. You don't examine a patient out in the corridor. It's always yeah. a special room, a ceremonial room, if you will. Yeah. Mysterious-looking objects on the walls. Yeah. Uh, a very specialized bed that you sit on. Uh, so, you know, that's another... Those are all signals that this is a ritual. Then when the, when the physician walks in, uh, the physician often is wearing a ceremonial garb, which happens to be a white coat. Fascinating. Yeah, no, this is, this is interesting, just from an anthropological point of view. Yeah. I, I never, you know, you just... Yeah. The physician's wearing ceremonial garb, and the patient is also instructed to disrobe and, uh, you know, get, gets a patient gown. So yes. So both participants clearly have a Which ritual. seems specially designed to put patients in a position of weakness. <laughs> I know. I know. It's <laughs> so, quite unfortunate. Yes. We should be rethinking a bit. <laughs> yes, I think there's a measure. Yeah. 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 And then the physician then begins a systematic exam, which at some level is mysterious to the patient. Uh, it's not always clear to the patient why the physician is thumping on their chest no. or why the physician is saying take a deep breath or right. cross your arms or stand on tiptoe or take your hand and touch your nose rapidly. Yeah. You know, so there's, there are mysterious and ritualistic aspects to it. And very often the physician is using terms that are somewhat Latinate right. and uh, arcane and utterly mysterious to the patient, uh, yep. such as frematus and percussion. And What does frematus mean? Frematus means uh, you ask the patient to say 99 and you listen, you sort of put your hand on their chest uh -huh. and you pick up the vibration. And if they have consolidation or collapse, the, the frematus is not what it should be compared to the other side. The frematus. Side. Yeah. So it was the sound or the... Uh, it's more like the vibration. Oh, the vibration. Like the, I see. The sound being transmitted through and being picked up by your hand. Interesting. So, yeah. Interesting. So, and then the, the you know, the, 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 the thing that's most interesting to me about the ritual is that the person coming in might be a policeman, a teacher... Uh, you know, uh, uh, an entrepreneur. But in the process of putting on that gown and sitting on that ceremonial uh, chair, they have sort of been stripped of all that identity. Yeah. And they are taking on the identity of being the patient. Yeah. But conversely, I think there's something very important that happens, which is that just before this, the patient has been vocalizing all their symptoms and their complaints. And, you know, at that point, the physician could order 10 tests and you know, go and look at the images, but there's something about the physician then laying hands on the patient right. that sort of gives weight to what the patient just talked about. Right. You talk about your belly hurting, and then this individual carefully examines your belly. It's sort of right. it's it's sort of validating your soma. Your right. your body is being validated in this ritual. Right. And then, uh, you know, when you finally have the tests all sent off, they they become sort of what follows intuitively on the ritual of first having it validated on your body. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I, I bemoan sometimes is that 
at times the patient in the bed, I feel, in hospitals around America has almost become an icon for the real patient who's in the computer. Right. You know, the, right. the entity in the computer. It's just something you interface with to get to that exactly. data structure yeah. in the computer. If I, it's I, interesting. I've coined a term for that entity in the computer. It's the eye patient. The eye patient, right. And the eye patient is getting fabulous care. The real patient, I think, has a need to feel their complaints validated, yeah. to feel it validated on their soma. Right. And to, to engage in a ritual uh, for which there's a transformation. And you might well ask me, what is the transformation that takes place in this ritual? And I think the transformation is the sense of uh, the patient has delivered the story. Yeah. The physician in the process of the ritual has validated that they've heard the story and tried to locate it on the soma. And the transformation is really the sealing of the patient-physician relationship. Wow. And so, you know, I think what has happened, uh, Sal, unfortunately, is that because we have so much technology, we've become very sloppy in the way we examine patients. Um, you know, I think that we could, we should be a hundredfold better at examining people, given that we have real-time feedback with echocardiograms, yeah. angiograms, and all that, instead of which I think people have never been less certain of their bedside skills. What about this phenomenon, just talking to physicians I know in, in my own family, that, you know, there's so much time pressure that there's, you know, they have to see so many patients, one every 15 minutes and all of this, and they wish they could do this, but they, they, they'll say that, you know, I, I have so many other things to worry about in the paperwork and all of that. I mean, is it realistic? to? to no, I think that's a very real concern, but I think if you can do this well, and our goal at Stanford is to teach our students to do it very well, you actually save time. Right. Because if you do a quick exam and you find that they're tender in certain spot, you can order the test that sorts just that out, rather than, which I think is much more common, which is, I don't really know what's going on, I'll tick off every box, and right. maybe something will fall out of the sky. Right. So I think a directed exam not only fulfills the ritual, but if you're any good at it, it actually allows you to ask better questions of yeah. the tests you order yeah. and minimize the patient's exposure to radiation. And, you know, I think the trouble is we get all these tests and we get back results we don't know what to do with. We right. stumble onto what we call incidental omas. Have you heard that term? Incidental omas. Well, I have heard that VIPs often get worse medical care because they, they, they do everything for them. Yeah, and exactly. Then they, and they, they wind up with yeah. finding things they don't know what to do with. Exactly. And leads to more Yeah, over-diagnosing things. But to come back to ritual, I, I think we at Stanford are very proud to feel that as much as we represent, you know, this great bastion of technology and advancement, we also celebrate the fundamental ritual aspects of the patient-physician yeah. relationship, which is best symbolized in the physical exam. That no, is I, I think this is why a lot of physicians originally want to enter the field. It sometimes gets so. lost, but this so. is why they wanted to do it. And you're right. I think they often get disappointed when they learn to do this and arrive on the wards and find that no one's carrying a stethoscope and no one's carrying... Right. I mean, they carry right. the stethoscope. I think it's like a mating yeah. symbol. Around no, you gotta, you got to carry one. <laughs> you got to carry the stethoscope. Yeah. But they don't carry the knee hammer and they don't carry all the other tools, which... I once visited my wife in the dark and I wore her coat and I, I felt very good. Yeah. <laughs> did you drape your stethoscope around the neck too? Oh, no, I did. Yeah, I looked very authoritative. That's a, that's a great signal that you're, you're <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that we have so much to learn from our anthropology colleagues about the importance of ritual. I think sometimes yeah. we operate as though medicine is all about reason, but you know, it's really reason, ritual, emotion, they all tie in together. This is yeah. art and science. No, this is fascinating. I'm going to reflect on some of the rituals I do now to see if they are. Anyway, <laughs> very cool. Well, thank you for this. Thank you so much.